Now in this section we will continue with our discussion on the PPP. If you remember in the previous session we have seen there are two different kinds of WAN protocols PPP and HDLC and PPP is going to support some authentication also apart from compression and error correction. So now in this section we will continue with authentication we will see if I require if I require to, to enable authentication and how we do that what are the different protocols we use that. So my requirement is I want to make sure that the link has to come up after successful authentication. So I'm going to configure up some password on both the sides and the link has to come up only after successful authentication. Now PPP authentication can be done by using two different methods or two different protocols we can say PAP and CHAT. Password authentication protocol, challenge handshake authentication protocol. Now PAP is a very simple method of authentication protocol where it is a simple a two-way handshake process like in general uh, it is going to simply send whenever the link connectivity is established it's going to send a username and the password and once you send the username and the password the router 3 or the remote router is going to check the username and the password if it matches then it's going to either accept the connection if it matches if it is not matching it is going to reject the connection it's a more like a simple uh, simple configuration or a simple way of authentication but one of the major drawback with the PAP authentication is the password is sent in a clear text so which means PAP is not much secure when you compare with CHAP so on the other way we have uh, another kind of authentication called CHAP challenge handshake authentication protocol now this challenge handshake authentication protocol is going to send the password in an encrypted text. It's more secure when you compare with PAP and here the router will not will not generate uh, generate the username and the passwords and the username and the password is only sent once it sends a challenge. Now challenge is like uh, whenever this device is when it tries to establish the connection with the router 3 the router 3 is going to send a challenge. Challenge is nothing but it is requesting for the code or it generates one code after username and the password it's requesting for that particular code or the username and the password and based on that it is going to send the username and the password and then uh, based on that once it sends it is going to either accept the connection or reject the connections if the configuration is correct it's going to accept if the, it is not correct it is going to reject the connections now the major difference between these two pap and chap uh, is uh, I can simply say CHAP is much more secure because it's going to send your password in an encrypted text whereas in the CHAP in the PAP it is in a clear text there's one more difference uh, PAP does only authentication on the initial link establishment uh, whereas here uh, it's a little bit periodic you know router the local router checks the response time again calculation and it's going to expect the hash value now here what exactly it is going to do is it is going to generate some hash value based on the username and the password if that hash value matches on both the routers then only it says that authentication will be successful so it's more like you know they are not sending the actual username and the passwords they they send the code the hash value and the hash value will only match if they have the same username and the password configured okay if the value matches authentication is acknowledged otherwise the connection is terminated immediately okay so to configure these authentications we need to get into the interface so let's go ahead and verify what are the commands we need to add if I want to use PPP as my protocol on both the sides and that too I want to use some CHAP authentication either we can use CHAP or PAP whatever the authentication method we can use okay uh, the first command is we need to ensure that we go to both the router interfaces we use PPP protocol on both the sides so the command to change to PPP is we need to say encapsulation PPP. Now this command is going to change by default on the serial links HDLC runs and I'm saying that I want to run a PPP protocol because when you run the PPP protocol then only uh, then only it's going to support authentication. Okay so this command and if you want to enable authentication if you want to say that authentication is mandatory in that case we can enable the authentication on that particular interface based on this command so I can give a command called PPP authentication chap which means I'm saying that on this interface 
the authentication process has to be chap and it has to verify the username and the passwords so these are the commands which we need to configure on both the routers okay so let's go ahead and configure these commands first on both the routers i'll go to router one i got the same topology what we have been using in our last classes same router one router two with the same ip addressing i'll go to router one and if you verify show show interface command show interface s0 by 0 uh, i'm not sure which protocol i'm using i think i'm using ppp uh, but it's okay even though if you are already configured with ppp you can one more time you can configure to ppp and then i'm going to say ppp authentication which authentication method you want to use so i'm going to use chap authentication and once you do this you can see the interface change state to down on the router 2 also i'm going to say interface s0 by 0 and capstation ppp and then i'm going to say ppp authentication chap now once i enable this chap authentication you can see the interface status goes down up and down now if you go back to the troubleshooting steps if you remember whenever you see the interface goes to down then most likely if you're using ppp protocol if there is a mismatch of authentication also that is one of the common reason for the interface going up and down so in this scenario which we are doing the lab we have enabled the ppp on both the sides and also we have enabled the authentication but we did not create the username and the passwords and that too the username and the password must match on both the sides so let's verify so we did only this part now we are going to configure the remaining part that is creating the usernames now on the router one we need to create a username and that username should match the exact host name of the remote device host name means if you remember on the router one we use the host name of r-1 on the router two we use the name of r-2 so if you want to check host name means exactly this name <coughs> whatever you are doing here exact host name on the router 2 i am using r-2 so on the router 1 we need to create the username of the router 2 and on the router 2 we need to create the username of the router 1 so you can see here on the router 1 i need to create username this username must be the exact host name of the router 2 nothing but the remote device we can say and then the password must be same on both the sides that's mandatory and on the router 2 we need to create a username of the router 1 and these two things must match the exact host name that is a mandatory condition you need to remember okay so it's must if they don't match in that case authentication will not be successful and the link will go up and down and even if the password do not match also then also the authentication will go down so remember that okay so let's go ahead and try to configure on the router one I'm going to say username r-2 now this username has to be the exact host name of the remote device if you if you just check out here on the router one I'm going to create the username exact this one and then the password Cisco 123 so when you are giving the password ensure that there is no space if there is a space the space also will be counted as a password and then on the router one now if you want to verify on the router one we can say username r-2 r-1 and the password is cisco, cisco 123 or cisco i think i use cisco 123 on both the sides so i'll be using cisco 123 okay so once i press enter after some time i should see the link changes to up because authentication is successful here Okay. so there is a command called debug ppp authentication there are some debug commands we can use if you want to see the backend process so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shut down the interface and make the interface back to up just to verify the debug outputs okay so you don't see generally uh, most of the outputs here but if you are working on the real routers you'll see some more outputs where it will show you some authentication process more in detail 
but anyway it's 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 a it's okay you can just try these commands if you are working on the real devices you will see some better outputs i can see the link changes to up and if you verify the configuration on the router 2 router 2 we have created a username and the password and then under the interface we have used a command called encapsulation ppp and then ppp authentication chap okay so this way we can we can enable authentication authentication is not mandatory but it's up to you it's up to you whether you want to enable now this is the minimum command even if i don't do this command default it runs hdlc and when i give this command then it becomes mandatory for you to create the username and the passwords so let's see if i want pap pap as a password let's say password authentication protocol uh, generally we don't use pap because of it is not much secure as a chap but let's say if you want to configure pap authentication the entire configuration goes exactly the same this configuration and this this is not you know you need to create a username which is going to match the exact remote hostname of the remote device hostname of the remote device that is something mandatory and then uh, these all the commands are same again you can see these commands whatever i'm highlighting there is one extra command we need to add ppp pap send username and the password now this command is mandatory because here the username and the password has to be generated manually by the administrator we have to give username and the username this name has to be the local username and the password and this password must match on both the sides so if you want to use pap authentication or pap configuration then we need to add one extra configuration command under the interface apart from that all the configurations remains the same and this command will change anyway because here i'm saying ppp authentication pap instead of chap authentication so if you want to verify i can just go to the interface and i can remove i can just for verification i can i can go to the router one and router two i'll remove the previous authentication methods like uh, i'll say interface s0 by 0 no ppp authentication chap so when when, when you use this command no no adding with anything before any command it's going to remove that particular configurations okay so same thing i need to do on the router 2 so this is the way we can edit any specific lines anything you want to remove just add no before that and then i'm going to say interface s0 by 0 no ppp authentication chap i think i have used chap last time now if i use show ip interface brief the interface is up and if i give show running config you can see on the serial interface there is no more authentication configured okay but this time i want to use chap pap authentication so if you remember already i have a username but still i'm creating one more time now this is something you need to do and then username r-2 password is cisco123 and then uh, what is the extra command we need to add we need to go to the interface we need to say encapsulation ppp and then ppp authentication i want to use pap and then we need to say ppp pap send username and the username it has to be the local hostname and the password is cisco123 so this one extra command we need to add under the interface so let's go to router 2 we need to say uh, interface s0 by 0 again the same interface we need to say encapsulation ppp ppp uh, ppp authentication i want to use pap authentication and then i need to say ppp pap send username the username has to be the local router and then the password is cisco123 so the password must be same now once i do this i should see when i give show ip interface brief I should see the interface status has to be up up that's the first confirmation and then i should be able to ping to the opposite side of the interface that is my 10.001 so i'm able to ping from router 2 to router 1 it confirms that uh, there is no problem so always remember one thing whenever you see the status of the interface as up and down if you misconfigure the authentication process then also you'll see the interface as down down or if there is a mismatch of protocol on one side you are using HDLC, 
and the other side you're using PPP also the interface will go down so in your lab scenarios if I don't use the clock rate command if you remember in yesterday's class uh, we discussed we, 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 we use a back-to-back -back cable for connecting between router to routers and then you need to do clocking generally uh, we need to generate clocking on the serial interfaces manually and uh, that is also one of the reason which applies only in the RAP scenarios.